Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we conclude our two-part message in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, titled, Restoring Others with Meekness. Some people like to rebuke and want to see people repent, but still won't forgive. So don't even go into it unless you're ready for this. And I, I'm, I'm preaching myself as much as anybody. There's been times where that's really hard for me. There are a couple of people, and I'm not going to name names, so don't ask. There are a couple of people who I still have not been restored to over the years. And the thing I've prayed over the years is that I'd be ready, if there's restoration possible, that I, I could honestly say I forgive because of something that they did to me. I stand here today and tell you I believe I'd have no problem forgiving, but I don't know yet because they won't repent. And if they won't repent, then my forgiveness stands here ready to be given. But all this nonsense about, well, even if they don't repent, you should still forgive them. That's, that's good intentions, but it's worded wrong. Even if they don't repent, you should be ready to forgive them. Right. Right. Even if there's no sign of repentance, you get your heart right. And you make sure you're ready to forgive. But in reality, you can't forgive them. Forgiveness has to be received. You have, you're ready to forgive, but they have to be ready to receive it. That's true. Same thing with the gospel. That's right. Same thing with the gospel. And sadly, that's not, you know, people are, are, you know, they've seen that with their own lives with the gospel, but yet on this thing with personal issues and everything with forgiveness, they don't seem to understand that. And they'll just, actually, it's a cop out. What a lot of people will say is, I just forgive them. They haven't confronted them. They haven't sought repentance. It's fallacy. It's psychobabble. It's psychobabble. That's right. It's, it's, it's all to make you feel good and no real restoration taking place. But you can pretend, I did my part. Wait a minute, did you rebuke? No, I just forgave. Then you didn't do your part. That's right. You see, what has happened is a lot of relationships are never restored because people take a shortcut to throw forgiveness out to someone who's not even receiving it, and they skip the parts of rebuke and repentance. And therefore, people continue unrestored because of a heretical teaching on forgiveness. And it's rampant, folks. And there's your process. You start with the rebuke. You have to confront repentance with a change of heart. And then comes restoration and forgiveness. Amen. And that's the three-part process for restoration. This process is to be done in the spirit of meekness. Another thing you need to, you know, you, if, if you've already got yourself ready to forgive, then this should be a given. But you don't walk up to people with, a, with your own attitude. Well, I want you to know that I know, and everyone who knows you know, that you're a lying, stinking punk. And you need to repent. Well, you're not going to, you know, that's not really the way to approach somebody when you really want restoration. Now, there might have been a time where you needed to tell them that they're a lying, stinking punk. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes people need to be, you know, woken up to the fact that everybody knows they're a liar. Again, not naming names, but there are some people today who are not being restored to people they've hurt and violated because they won't even start by recognizing that they're a liar and, and that people know they lie. Yep. And until that happens, there'll be no restoration. Mm -hmm. But when you confront people, when they know what their sin is, once you've made it clear what their sin is, it says, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Read that word. Meekness. 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 Didn't say weakness, right? Didn't say weakness. Meekness. It's a reminder that meekness is not weakness. Got to repeat that every time the word comes up because the world actually portrays it that way and Christians have adopted this false idea that meekness is weakness. Now I want to show you an example. Have you got anything you can tell us about? about yes, I have. I've got lots to tell you. Go on, just give us a Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Is that your reaction to what people who want you off the spot is shortlived? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And what about you being stripped of your belt? I mean, that, that, that's, uh, you must be very unhappy with that. What's your reaction to that? Jesus loves me, 
and he loves you too, and he loves you too. He loves these people in here, and he loves everybody in the world. You All you've got to do is repent of your sins, and you will be, get, be forgiven. And do you think you can win Spotty? Do you want to win Spotty? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall have eternal life and shall not perish. Okay, Fison. Uh, any final, any final message to those people who who have criticised you in recent? There's been a lot of criticism from people in signing petitions to the uh, Scottish national people, to all sorts of yes, people. Yes, yes. Just give us, just give us your take on it. Do you stand by your comment? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Okay, Tyson. The only way is through Jesus into heaven. That's all I can say. The A to Z, the Alpha, the Omega. Isn't that awesome? Jesus is the way, the King. <laughs> but watch this. This was after one of his bouts. Well, Tyson Fury there seeming pretty firm with his stance on the matters just there. Uh Thank my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. In the power of Jesus, I won this in Germany tonight. You know, I came here to Germany in the lion's den. To a great, great champion in Vladimir Klitschko. And my Lord, my Saviour, my rock, my salvation. Give me the glory tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. <laughs> I mean... Amen. I, know, I, I don't know anything about the guy, I don't know his life or anything, but I'm just telling you, for a, a champion of the world, wow. on the night that he wins the belts he's holding, and all he wants to do is tell people how to be saved. Amen. And then there's a controversy, people say stuff, and they try to get him to bite and go on, and he just keeps preaching the gospel. He's taking the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Now, that is meekness. I mean, he could have... Because the opposite of meekness is also cockiness, arrogance. It's not weakness and it's not arrogance. And the guy could say, mm, I'm the greatest. You know? That's Cassius and, and who are they? All of them. Mike Tyson. I'm the greatest. You know? <laughs> Muhammad Ali was the first one. And the second one was Mike Tyson. I, you didn't recognize my imitation there. But I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> I just, that's just a great example. By the way, his name is Tyson Fury. Um, again, not endorsing him or anything. I don't want you to get the wrong idea, but that just to me is a picture of meekness, preaching the gospel, not preaching Tyson. So what does meekness mean? Let's look at the built-in definition of the King James Bible at the end of verse 1. The spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Meekness is, as we said earlier, is not putting yourself above what you really are. Meekness is understanding that you are no, not even no better. We're all damned in the need of salvation until we're saved. And then when we're saved, there's no boasting. You didn't do anything to save yourself. You didn't do anything to deserve it. And as long as you can hold that gospel truth in your heart and mind, it will make you meek. It will cause you to be meek. Humility. Knowing that, but for the grace of God go I. You ever heard of that? Yeah. But for the grace of God go I. Now some people just say that flippantly, but it's a truism. It's only by the grace of God. Again, you should have been cast into hell the first thing, time you'd sinned. But what did He do? He gave you mercy and grace to continue to sin while he continued to witness to you the gospel until you got saved. Here's how Webster's defines meekness in an evangelical sense, humility, resignation, submission to the divine will. That's key. Without murmuring or peevishness, opposed to pride and arrogance. They even give you that reference this is the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. If you don't have one and you can find one that you can afford or it's online. Web's, Webster's Dictionary, 1828.com. It's not filled up with all these modern perversions that you see in, in new dictionaries. But humility, resignation, submission to the divine will. You may not feel like forgiving. This isn't about how you feel. It's submission to the divine will. You may not want to restore them in your flesh. So what do you do? You pray so the Lord gives you the want. <laughs> but you do it anyway, regardless of how you feel, because you submit to God's will as expressed in God's Word. 
You submit to the divine will. What's the divine will? It's not some mystical thing up in the, you know, it's expressed in God's word. We're reading it right now. That's God's will for restoration. And that is meekness. Amen. That is meekness. And we are further admonished to bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. What's that mean? Well, first of all, and I'm not here to pick on anybody, but I'm here to tell you that week in, week out, we have prayer time where people share prayer requests. You ought to take those with you. Even if you don't write them down, if you have them in your head, your heart, if you're going to bear one another's burdens, that means you pray for these needs that you've heard this morning during the week. You pray for one another during the week. You also look for opportunities to help one another. Amen. And that's, that's what the theme is when you are trying to restore someone who's in a fault or in sin, whatever the case may be, it's because you have this attitude of bearing one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. The law of the Spirit. The law of being led by the Spirit of God means, well, it's not possible unless the one another are meek. Yeah. Jesus, meek and lowly. The Spirit of Christ, the law of Christ, is to walk in meekness. And none of this is possible biblically and truly and honestly. None of this is possible unless you are meek. And when most people give a wrong definition to the very word, then it means there's a real problem with meekness today. It's misunderstood. People who are full of themselves are the opposite of meek. And folks, you go out to Oprah and all these people out there are telling people, it's all about you. What they, the magazines are self magazine. You know, it's all this stuff about me, me, me. Uh, we had the clip of Victoria Osteen even telling people to come to church and whatever you do, you're not really doing it for God, you're doing it for yourself. And that's the way people teach this stuff. Even this, some of the quotes I've heard from people like John Piper and others, mm -hmm. they t tell everybody that it, it, by you being so happy that that's what makes God happy. And then so people spend all their time thinking, oh, I'm just going to do whatever makes me happy and that makes God happy. That's not how it works. No, how it works is that when you are full of the Spirit of God, then the things that make you happy are the things of God. Amen. Do you see how they perverted that? It's the opposite of meek. For, verse 3, read it. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Oh, yeah. You get up in churches today and say, folks, today, and I, I should have done that. I might still do it next week. The title of the service is, You Are Nothing. The title of the message today, You Are Nothing. Isn't that what it says? If you think yourself to be something when He is nothing, what does that mean? That means you're nothing, I'm nothing, He is everything. You're a child of wickedness and wrath. He has saved your soul. You deserve hell. He has given you heaven. You are nothing. He is everything. I must decrease. He must increase. Oh, man, if that could be preached from the pulpits across this world today, it would change everything. Amen. And sadly, this describes most people today. Yeah. They think there's something. And it's, they're wrong. <laughs> and that's regardless of their profession. I mean, whether they profess to be Christian or not, most people think there's something. And this ought not be so. Amen? Amen? The Christian life ought to be one of selflessness. That's a sign of meekness. Selflessness. In closing, I want us to stand and read Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 11. And I'll uh, begin with the odd and you all join in the even. And then we'll read verse 11 together. 
So beginning of verse 1, Philippians chapter 2, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Everyone read. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You take what you heard in this message from Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 and meditate on what we just read in light of everything you heard and let God do the ministry. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for this message this morning, this Word that all of us need. All of us need it. All of us as in every saved person. Every saved man, woman, child needs to understand this message. And uh, just so happens that we're meeting at the end of the year as we come to a new year, but boy, what a time it would be to see some revival take place in the lives of people who would truly uh, repent and be restored. And what we need to be is ready to do that. We need to be ready for restoration, ready to forgive. And thank you for reminding us in your word, Lord, of exactly what we are, who we are, and that we, we deserve nothing. And all praise, honor, and glory goes to you. All praise, honor, and glory goes to Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, help us to always maintain that attitude. It's hard. Our flesh gets in the way. Help us to be reminded. And Lord, I just ask now you bless each one, everyone here this morning, sure of their salvation, having repented toward God with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ and how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Believing in our heart, confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you, Lord, for saving each one of us. And we just look forward to being in your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to sing the pastor's favorite song. How many of you know? 500. Page 500. When the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there And the 
of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com. <laughs> 